chapter 7. I want you to listen very carefully this morning as I give you a thought that is important every person in this room. The younger you are, the least serious you're going to take this. The older you are, the more you're going to realize what I'm saying right. Young people don't seem to get it a lot of times. But as you get older, you start seeing more and more and more of these truths that are in the Bible. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29. But this I say, brethren, verse 29, this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it. Look at this. The fashion. Remember that I was talking about a minute ago about devices being up to date? Look how up to date that is. Fashion. That's in Hollywood, every magazine in the world. Fashion of this world passeth away. Amen? I want to look at verse 29 where he said, The time is short. That's what I'm preaching on today. Now, defining time is a hard thing to do. What is time? And time is literally a fleeting little span between two eternities. God made time. So before God created time, there wasn't no time. He dwelt in eternity. That's why he says, I am. He just always was, or always am, always is. And when time's over, there'll be no time again. I've told you that in recent weeks. So we find ourselves living in a little gap called time. Now, what I want you to do this morning is I want you to think with me, and we're going to talk about time and how short your time really is. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, do you realize it's going to be youth rally, and then as soon as that youth rally's over, I mean, it's May, and then school's out, and then we're, we're having camp, and then it's Bible school, and then it's back to school, and then it's camp meeting, and then it's Thanksgiving and Christmas, and another year, I mean, just like that. And it seemed like the hardest two or three months is the January, February, March. Then it's shoo, from then on uh, down that hill. And it's hard for kids to realize that. I, I told you before, I remember when I was little, I, I, must, I couldn't have been five, six, six years old. I remember saying to my mom, Mom, how long is it till Christmas? And she'd say, it's three more weeks, honey. Three more weeks. I said, oh, I would hurt. My stomach would hurt. I say, I cannot wait. Why does it have to be three weeks? Three weeks when you're six years old can seem like forever and ever and ever. And, and you know, Daddy would go out and he'd get our tree. They'd always put our Christmas tree up about two weeks before Christmas. We, and, boy, we need to put that tree up. My heart, I mean, bam, bam. And then... Then they, mom would decorate, and then it was cold, and then they'd bring them presents, torture a little old kid like that'd be a shame, uh, uh, torture a child like that, put something t with his name on it, a surprise, and then slap him if he touches it. Child abuse. Uh, and I've done mine the same way. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you put that uh, gift under that tree, and uh, we'd go running through the house, and I'd look, that one's mine, and that one's mine, you know, big, I don't know why you think the big ones are, are better, but they're not always, are they? Uh, 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 diamonds in them little bitty ones, you know, and, and, a, and a toy trucks in them big ones. But uh, they, they, I would look at those packages, and, and uh, my goodness, I'd say, Mom, how many, how many more days is it? I'd say, now, what day is Christmas on? She'd say, it's on Thursday, honey. And I'd say, so that Wednesday night, we're going to, and they'd always make us wait, you know, Christmas morning. And uh, I would walk through there and look at them. Mom and Dad go to the store, and I'd get my, my present, and I'd look at it. I'd hold it up to the light, uh, look, you know, try to shake it. And, you know, some of you have done the same thing. You take your fingernail and start picking at that scotch tape. Real easy so they can't 
So they, how many done that one? You want to try to peep it <laughs> so they can't tell it? And you know, if, if you ever mess with it like that, it won't look right when you put it back. You can't never get it to look just exactly like it was. And you need, so you put it underneath all the other presents. So they won't, they won't know that you've been looking at it. All you hypocrites done the same thing. And, and you know, I remember, I remember that last week before Christmas. I thought I'd die. I, I, did, I thought, I'm not going to make it. When is Christmas? Then you know what? Christmas finally come. You know what, buddy? I got, I got grown, got kids, and I got to noticing. Christmas comes a lot quicker than it used to. And then, then as you get old, now every time I turn around, it's Christmas. It comes every three months now. Have you? It makes a big difference when you're on the buy. You have to pay for that stuff. And, and instead of the one that, you know, you ain't got last year's paid for from Sears, and it's Christmas again. And you know what? You, you know what you don't realize? You don't realize how fast time goes when you're young. But as you get older... You realize, I will now put you on a scale and you can all see where you are on times of, of your life. Let's imagine this morning that you got up in the morning. Most of you have never done this, but you've worked. You've ever worked a double shift? I have. I worked, uh, I worked second shift. I used to go in the second shift and work 3 o'clock to 11, and they'd let us work overtime, work third shift, and you get paid like double. And me and these guys, we'd work from 3 to 7 the next morning, go home, sleep about five hours, and get up and do it again. And I mean, I was 17 years old. I don't know why I'd done that. 18, I guess, just crazy, I guess. I didn't need the money. But uh, we just, I thought, man, we get more money if we work, and we did that. And if you've ever worked a one-day shift or a two, two shifts in one day, let's say you go to work at 7 in the morning, and you're going to get off at 11 at night. Now, that's your life. Let's say we're going to compare that to one day and your life to that. So you were born at 7 in the morning. You live your life. You die at 11 o'clock that night, giving you 70 years. If you're over 70, you've been blessed with extra time. And, and uh, a lot of, many of you have. Thank God for it. Now, what's this? I'm going to show you where you are in your life. Now, remember, you're born at 7 o'clock in the morning. You're going through the day, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, still morning. you got all day long. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, so maybe just now getting up. Uh, uh, you still got all day long. You've slept half your life. And then, and you go to, then finally, you die at 11 that night. Everybody understand? You got, you got this now? All right. If you're 15 years old, it's 10.25 in the morning. That means you got up at 7 o'clock and it's already break time. 10.25 if you're 15. If you're 20, it's 11.34. Almost lunch. 20 years old. And any man in here who's ever worked knows that you get a lot done for dinner time or lunch time, they call it. If you're 25, it's 18 minutes till 1 in the afternoon. 25 years old. If you're 30, obviously, it's getting close to halfway. 9 minutes till 2. If you're 35, it's 3 o'clock. You're half gone. If you're 35 years old, it's 3 o'clock in the evening and you die at 11 that night. 35. If you're 40, it's 4.08 in the evening. It's after 4 o'clock in the evening if you're 40 years old, people. You started at 7 that morning. You're, you're dying at 11 tonight. If you're 45, it's 16 minutes after 5. Supper time. Lord, some of you about to have a heart attack right now. Hang on, you ain't going to make it. If you're 50, it's 25 after 6 in the evening. If you're 55, it's 734. 55. If you're 60, it's 18 minutes till 9. 
If you're 60, it's 18 minutes till 9 o'clock at night. If you're 65, it's 8 minutes till 10. And if you're 70, you're gone. Bye-bye. According to normal life. Now, some of you will never make it to 70. And many of you, many will. I'm just saying. Now, you can see right there where you are on that time schedule. The Bible said time is short. They used to say this. Uh, somebody said the clock of life, one of my favorite poems, the clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. To lose one's wealth is sad indeed. To lose one's health is more. To lose one's soul is such a loss nobody can restore. You better remember this morning, friend. Your time is short. Three things right quick and we'll go. Number one, time is short to settle your affairs. You got something you need to straighten out? You've only got a certain amount of time. Hard feelings, you, you, you mad at somebody, miss on it, you aggravated, you owe somebody an apology, you need to make it right with a family member, get right with somebody. Time is short to settle your affairs. David and Absalom went all those years, got on bad terms and never did get right. Absalom was killed. Jacob and Esau I finally tried to make it right after 20 years or, or something like that and, and other places in the Bible. The prodigal son come home and make it right. But I've seen so many people. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of funerals, a lot of funerals, and I see a lot of tears shed at funerals, and a lot of the tears that are shed at funerals are not really just sorry the person died. They're tears of regret. I've seen people say, oh, Mama, I wish I'd have come and seen you. Daddy, if I'd have just, uh, if I'd have just known, Daddy, I'd have made things right. Daddy, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. I've seen them lay over the casket and grab the body and bawl their eyes out saying, Mama, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. Listen, it's too late telling you sorry then. Your time is short to settle your affair. You got a family member you're out of fellowship with? Have you done your parents wrong or somebody? I mean, if you're trying to make something right with somebody and they won't let you, I ain't talking about that. But if, if you are the guilty one and you are the one that needs to straighten it out, he who forgives ends the quarrel. And you know what? Get it straight. Get it straight. Years ago, uh, before I got saved, I was telling you when I was um, working when I was 17, and I got out of high school when I was 17. I was 16 in 12th grade, y'all. I didn't get my driver's license until November of my senior year because I started a year early. So I was 16 in 12th grade and got I was 17 in November, graduated when I was 17. And my daddy let me drive his car. And I come up Hoppy Tom, the road I live on, it's a mile long. Most of y'all know then that at Hop Tom. And there's a big bank straight up the hill about a third of the way, a uh, fourth of the way up, uh, right in the place where Snowball lives, the big dog I told you about last Sunday, big white dog about that here. Years ago, there was an old man lived there named Strail McCurry, Strail. That was his name. And uh, old Strail, he's a good old guy, and I never hardly talked to him, but you have to cross a creek to go over there to their house and they have a little bridge there, but when it's bad weather, they just park on the side of the road there. And that strip, Carrie can tell you, uh, uh, is when it snows and ices, there's one strip of that road where the ice stays way after it's gone everywhere else. You know, all of, us, all of you know in, in this part of the country, up here in these hills, you, uh, uh, when it snows, uh, where the sun hits, the snow melts, and where it don't, man, it can, it can stay icy for several days longer than where, where it's done melted everywhere else. Like in my yard now, man, it melts fast over my mom's. It'll be a week later and there's still snow in her yard, right on the north side or whatever they call that, the bank. Well, there's a stretch there about, oh, I don't know, longer, longer than this church, maybe 200 feet uh, there, where it's completely in the shade and it stays ice there. I just got my license. I've been driving about maybe, I don't know, a year. Maybe I got them on my 16th birthday. And I, um, and I, Daddy had this old car. It was a big, long Ford. I don't remember what kind of Ford it was. I know they had fire lanes. It wasn't that. They had a, I forgot what it was. Ford, it, it, I don't know what it was. It was a big, long Ford. Had, back then, cars had steel bumpers. They weren't plastic like they are now. Solid steel bumpers, buddy. I mean, you'd have to hit one of them hard to, to hurt it. And uh, uh, I, I come up through there, and I, every day, he let me drive a car to school, 
And every day, I'd be coming down Hoppy Tom, and it was dirt then, it wasn't paved. And when I'd hit that icy spot, I'd just goose the gas a little bit. And I loved that feeling. Well, there was tires spinning because the car sort of goes like this a little bit, and I'd let on there, vroom, straighten out. And then you'd hit the dry, the, the dry road, and you'd just go right on. Well, I got a little bit braver, a little bit braver, a little bit braver. And I'd come through there, and I'd come through there, and I'd be going pretty fast. And as soon as I'd, as soon as I'd hit the ice, I'd just guys go, ring. The back tire's doing about 50 miles an hour. Front tire's doing about, you know, 20 or something like that. And I'd go, ring, straighten out through there. And I still do that to this day. I do. But I was, I was dumb then. And I was coming up through there one day. And I was coming up, going toward the house. And I hit that icy spot, hit that gas. And that thing, that thing went ring. And, and I, I was like it. And all of a sudden it went boom. Oh, my goodness. That's the awfulest. You know, that's the awfulest feeling in the world when you lose control of a car. How many of you know what that feels? It's just that one little half a second. I say, oh, God, what have I done? I mean, there ain't no going back. There ain't no. And I heard it. Bam! And the back of Daddy's bumper hit the side of a stray old car. He parked it there beside the creek. It hadn't been there. It went off in the creek. I went, oh, I got sick. I was sick to my stomach. And the first thing I did was looked at my Daddy's car to see if it was all right. Because he'd kill me. <laughs> He's going to kill me already. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was like that right there, man. It didn't even hardly make a, it didn't hardly make a stray old car. had a whole a panel in just crushed in. I said, well, I looked around. wasn't nobody. I walked across the creek over there. I said, stray old. And nobody was home. I couldn't get them by the door. You know what I've done? I'm ashamed to tell you all this. I really am. I'm ashamed to tell you. I was a lost sinner. So I ought to be shocked. I got my car and head on up the road and went home and didn't open my mouth. Hit and run. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I mean, I know you think bad of me for that. And I just went on home and I thought, well, I just won't say nothing else about it. Time went on. Time went on. Every time I'd go by there, I'd look and I'd see that dent in that car and I'd just keep going. And I'd go by there every day. And I'm telling you today, it wasn't long after that I got saved. When I got saved at Nebo Baptist Church, buddy, and I got saved, and I'm, I'm got on that all, and I, I puked up every sin I ever committed, everyone. I mean, tell you, I got, I got a dose. I'm telling you, God got a hold of me, y'all. I'm telling you, I, I'm willing. I didn't care what I had, what I didn't have. I didn't care if I ever had a dime. I didn't care if I, I said, God, I want you. You're the best thing ever happened to me. Lord, I want you. And man, I, I was going full stream. And one night I was at church and the preacher preached on something like I'm preaching on this morning, getting things straight there. And all of a sudden, Strail's face popped in my head. And the Lord said, Don't you think you need to go make that right with Strail? And I said, That wasn't the Lord. That's under the blood. <laughs> Woo, I'm glad God don't remember that, do you? He said, no, I don't. But you do, don't you? You remember that? Thank God you forgot all about it. He said, that's right. I forgot all about it. But you remember it, don't you, Danny? I'm telling you, you wouldn't leave me alone. That's the awfulest feeling. That's a, oh, I hate it when that happens. When the, when the Holy Ghost just gets in and just, it just, and, and try as you will, you can't make him go away. And I know right there is a turning point in a lot of people's life. God deals with them about stuff and they refuse to listen and they don't never get nowhere after that. It wasn't just the money, it was my pride. After it had been a year and a half. And the Lord, I said, okay. I finally got an order. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to get the money and you go pay, tell him what you've done and you pay for that to get fixed. I said, I'd rather took a beating. I'd rather took a beating as went to that man a year and a half later and told him. I started saving my money. And I was working. I, I had no idea what it cost. I saved up. I forgot what I got, $150, $200 back then. I'd be like 1000 now. It'd be just like 1000 now. And I, I'd save $20, save $20, put it in my wallet. I'd get a big lump in my throat every time I'd go by there. And one day I said, I'm getting this over with. 
Might as well just get it over with because I ain't going to have no peace. I ain't going to have no victory. And by the way, let me say here, you know, I know you can't go back and straighten out everything wrong you've ever done. I understand that, and I'm not saying you have to. But something, when God puts his finger on something in your life, that's what he wants you to do. Some of you, Lord, you'd never have nothing if you went back and tried to do it for everything you messed up before you got saved. And I don't mean it like that, but I knew God wanted me to straighten that out. So one day I parked over there. I, th- I thought I'd throw up. I, I, I lot, I'm a lot stronger now than I was then. And uh, I, I, can, I, mean, I don't care who knows I'm a sinner now. Everybody knows it, and I know it, and God knows it. But then, you know, you just hate to admit it. And I called him out there, and I said, How you doing, Strail? He said, fine, how are you, Danny? He's an old man. I said, Strail, I need to talk to you. He said, okay. I said, you remember one day, about two years ago, <laughs> you come home <laughs> and inside your car's messed in. I thought, maybe he won't remember it. He remembered it. He remembered it. He said, yeah. I said, well, I just want you to know that I did it. And I looked for you, and there wasn't nobody here, and I went on home. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed, and I want you to forgive me, and I got some money here, and I'm going to give it to you, and if it's more, whatever it costs to get that fixed, here it is, and if it's more, let me know. I want it right. And that burden was already starting to lift. And you know what that man did? He looked back at me and said, Oh, son, don't worry about it. He said, I traded that old car. He said, I heard you got saved. I'm proud of you. Heard you preaching now and everything. And he would not take that money. And brother, I, went, I put that in my pocket and I went up the road. Man, I felt like I was floating on air. Had a hundred and something bucks in my pocket. I'm telling you, you know what? Your time is short to settle your affairs, people. Time is short. You got something you need to go get right? Hey, let me ask you something. When you bow down and pray right now, whose face do you see? Whose face do you see? Brother Danny, don't throw all that guilt. I'm not, I'm not, I understand that. There's a couple other things I had to do like that. And I've done a lot since then. But time is short to settle. I'd have hated to went by there one day and saw a wreath on that door and thought I'd done that man wrong, never did make it right with him. Number two, time is short to do something for God. In the winter, it's too cold. I know, I know some of you sitting right here. In the spring, it's too pretty. You've got to plant my garden. In the summer, we're busy and on vacation and mowing the grass. In the fall, well, it's just a harvest and we're going here and going there. And then it's too cold again. Then it's too hot. And if you're not careful, your whole life will pass you by and you still ain't doing nothing for God. Some of you sit here, I'll, have, I'll preach a good hard sermon and you have all good intentions. I'm going to visit, I'm going to pray, I'm going to give out tracts, I'm going to fast, I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to do this. But then you just slip right back into that same old pattern of doing nothing. I'm telling you, your time is short. Your time is short. Somebody said this, Dost thou love life? Then don't waste time because that's the stuff it's made out of. You love life? Quit wasting time. That's what life's made out of. I, I can't believe people sit around all week and say, I can't wait till Friday, can't wait till Friday, can't wait till Friday. What are you going to do Tuesday? Do something for God Wednesday. Do something for God Thursday. Get busy. Don't, don't waste all your time watching movies. Don't waste all your time on a stupid phone or that iPad or just playing around watching every video that's ever been put out. Brother, do something for God while you've got a change. But learn to cherish every bit of your time and not waste it. I tell you what's going to happen. That loved one or that uncle of yours or that cousin of yours, you're going to get a phone call one day and say they're gone. You got a family member you've never witnessed to. You got a boss man that you know God has dealt with your heart to talk to about the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to you're going to, listen. This youth rally is the Greatest time of the year for us to do something for God. You say, well, well, Lord, my sister's full of the devil, Brother Danny. I I can't talk to her. I I understand that. I know we've all got people like that in our family. I got one girl, she come in and said, she said, Daddy, I really love this boy and I want to marry him. But he don't believe there's a devil. 
Her daddy said, well, marry him. You'll show him he is one. <laughs> Time is short to get busy for God. Time is short. I went visiting yesterday down there in Hickory. I took these things. Listen, you can, if you take one of these things right here and stick it up at the mall in your local neighborhood, Dollar General, and you put it there like that right there, and one person comes by and says, you know what? I've got a teenager on drugs. I've got a teenager that needs God. And they bring, you don't never know that one act right there may prevent somebody. You don't know. You don't, it may prevent somebody from going. We've had people show up over there and said, I saw the flyer. I saw the flyer. And I'm telling you folks, what an opportunity. What an opportunity we got. This is it. The church is praying. The atmosphere is good. It, it's hot. The water's being stirred. There's a good atmosphere. Brother Jason mentioned a while ago that we prayed last night and we got a lot of visitors here this morning. The Lord woke you up and sent you in here this morning. You might not even realize that. I'm telling you, time is short. Do something for God. Do something for God. Do something for God. Quit Wasting your time. You say, well, I'm only 25, I'm only 30, I'm only 40. It'll be gone before you realize it. Listen, people, you, you don't even, I mean, you, when, I was, when I was little, I told you how slow it went. When I got, I thought I'd never get 16. I was a year early, so everybody in my class had their driver's license a year before I did. Some of them boys 16 in the, in the 10th, 10th grade. Some of them 16 in the 8th grade. <laughs> And, and they, they go get their driver's license. And I, I was in the, I thought I, when I get 16, bless the Lord, I'm going to get my, and I did, and then I want to be 18. Because 18-year-olds get to do stuff 16-year-olds couldn't do. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I, I thought I want to be 18. Then when I was 18, I wanted to be 21. I thought if I'm 21, I'll be an adult. And then when you get 21, you say, okay. But it don't stop. 22, 23. Let me show you how life goes. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. You don't even remember your 40s, some of you. That's how fast it goes. Once you hit 20s, brother... I'm telling you, I'm warning. You listening to me this morning? I stand here today realizing my time on this earth is going fast. This is my opportunity to influence you for God to do something for Jesus Christ while you've got a chance. Listen to me this morning. Do something for God. Do something for God. Grab you some of these. Get you a handful of tracks. Be a soul winner. Serve God fast. Pray. Do something for God because your time is going fast, people. It's going fast. It's going fast. Don't, don't, don't let that sign be out in your neighborhood and say, I wish I'd have went and talked to him. Do it this week. Number three, I'm through. Time is short for you to get saved. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, time's short, buddy. If I hadn't got saved the night I did, I don't know where I'd be right now. I'd be in hell or no telling where else. If I hadn't got saved the night I did, I don't know what would happen. Somebody said, when I was a babe, I cried and wept, time crept. When as a child, I laughed and talked, time walked. Then as a man, I became a man, time ran. Soon I shall find, in traveling on, time gone. Now is the only time you have to get saved. If you're here this morning, you're not saying, I'm going to wait a while, I'm going to wait a while. You don't know. Uh, Ronnie back there was telling me a while ago about a man. He said he listened to me preach and other preachers preach. And he went to work. And he said he worked with this man uh, up there in, what was it, American Thread or something? CNA, up there above Marion. And he said, there's a man up there who's always bragging about what he's going to do when I retire I'm going to do this. When I retire, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get me a, a, a motor home, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do this. And he always told him, said, man, 
He's always bragging about that. And he'd give him a track or told witness to him or something. I forgot what he said. But he said, in two weeks' time, that man's dead. Never did retire. Never did go nowhere in no motor home. Never did get to travel. And the devil will make you think, man, I'm going to work hard all the time now. When I, when I retire one of these days, I'm going to go visiting with you, preacher. Well, you know what the devil's doing to you? He's playing a trick on you. Playing a trick on you. I heard Dr. Kidd say on tape, he's listening to who he said this. So he's coming down through the mountains in that big old bus when it's full time evangelist. And he said, in front of him, down the mountains up in West Virginia, there's a pickup truck, and there's five boys. One teenage girl in that truck, boys in the back and boy and girl in the front. And they're all drunk. They're going to have graduation the next night. They were graduating high school the next night. He said, it's flying down that road in front of him. He said, about that time, that pickup truck got out of control and went around like this. You know how they'll overcorrect or something? And it come back out and he said, it flipped that truck. And he's just like bodies, just slinging them down that highway. He said, them kids went sliding down that highway on their back and filleted them alive. You slide from here to the other side of that parking lot over there on solid pavement doing 50 miles an hour, you ain't got no skin or nothing left on your body. He said he got out, he said two or three of the boys died instantly. He said he took one of the boys over here in his head like this, and he said yeah, all his bones was broken. He tried to move that boy, and he's just like a, a sack of water just moving because every bone in his body's broke, busted up. He said there's a girl. The, the girl was in her a face in the ditch. She's so drunk she couldn't even lift her head up. And he told that girl, he said, honey, you hang on, you're, you're hurt bad. You're hurt bad. We got help on the way. And he said, he, like, he took that bus and went like that, keep running over one of them boys with that big bus, busted a wheel on his bus, hit the ditch. And he said, that girl, he said, he called her daddy. She lived. And he called that girl's daddy three months later, and he said, yes, yeah, she's alive. But she said, her, her diploma's on the wall. She can't read it. She's a vegetable the rest of her life. You kids get out of here. You think it's cool. You think you can party. You think you can fool around like that. Listen, we just lost two over here Friday night. Right up the road here. You think it'll never, ever, listen, everybody that ever happened to thought just like you. That ain't going to happen to me. That's what they thought. And he said that young man, he said he grabbed that boy and held his head. And his lap with blood ran over his on his suit. And he said, Son, you're hurt bad. I'm a preacher. Can I pray for you? And he said, That boy I said, Preacher! Don't let me die! Don't let me die! I'm drunk! Don't let me die! I'm drunk! He said, That boy'd been somewhere at some old mountain church and some old preacher that preached on the evils of alcohol. That kid was laying there screaming, don't let me die, I'm drunk. And he died. You know what them kids didn't realize? Didn't realize how short your time can be. Yeah, say what you want to. Call me a fear monger. Call me an alarmist. Call me whatever you want to call me. I'll get letters, emails, and everything on this. I'm telling you, you don't know how much time you've got left. About the time you think you're high and mighty and you got it made, that's when God will jerk a rug right out from under you. You hear me? Now is the only time we have to do His will. Don't wait till tomorrow. The clock may then be still. You want to help with a bus? You better get with it. You want to help Sunday school? You want to but do you think you're going to do something for God? You better do it now. Tell you what I've done. I preached on Sunday morning with the people sitting in the church. And before the next Sunday, I preached that person's funeral. Wow. You may be having mine this week. I don't know. I'm not trying to sound dramatic, people. This is reality. This is reality. Time is short. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. No one's talking, no one's moving.
Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. God speaking to your heart. If the Lord's speaking to your heart right now, you say, How enough he's speaking to my heart? Well, if you listen to what I said and you've heard it, he's speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now through the Holy Spirit. You say, Why does God have to do it like this? I don't know. That's why he's God and you ain't. I ain't. He always does exactly what's right. But you get out of your seat and come down here and get down on your knees. This morning. Come on. Daddies, mamas, boys, girls. You don't know how short your time is. Come on. Come on. Get down here and get down on your knees. Some's coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. If you're here this morning you've never been saved, why don't you come this morning? Come on. Come on. If you're here this morning you've never been saved, good time to get saved. Good time to get saved right now. Come on, friend. Come on. Just get out of your seat and come. We're going to pray and we're going to sing. Get out of your seat. Make your way down here and let's get saved this morning. Come on. Father, please do what ought to be done right now. Holy Spirit, tug on somebody's heart strings this morning. Dear God, do what needs to be done in every life. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Let's sing. Come on now. Have thine own way. Come on, come on, come on right now. Come on. Have thine own way. Sing now. Thou art the power. Have your own way, Lord. Come on. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. Say, after thy will. You come this morning. While I am waiting. Yielded Let's sing it again, brother. Why we sing another verse? Have Will you come this morning? Way, you come this morning, Lord, friend. If you don't know, if you don't know, if you don't know for a fact that you're ready to meet God. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on, right now. Amen. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now. Amen. As in the prayers. Amen. Let's sing. Let's sing. You come right now. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Come on, young man. You know, time is short, Daddy. Your time is short. Hold over my being. Absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit. Till all shall see. Christ only always. I tell her all the time, she probably gets tired of me saying it. I said, thinking it's too early makes it too late. You'll get that one these days. It might take you a many years. Thinking it's too early makes it too late. You think, oh, we've got plenty of time. It don't start till such and such o'clock. You're going to be late. I always plan on being early because time is short. Another thing I say all the time is time and change wait for no man. Time and chance wait for no man. Opportunities that come up, business deals, uh, other stuff. It comes and you got to get it while you can't. Got to change because it don't wait on you. It's just passing us by, and it don't. You can't go back to this morning and redo it. It's gone, gone forever. In the record books, this sermon I preached, it's in the record books up in heaven right now. I can't do nothing to change it. So the rest of our life. Baby. He said, man, preacher, I thought we were just supposed to enjoy life and have fun. Somebody lied to you. This world ain't no place just to live it up. It's preparation ground for eternity. Amen. One more verse. We'll sing one more verse. You need to come. Have come thine come own right way. Now. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. Have That's the Lord help me right now. Come on, come on, right now. Wounded and weary. You know what you need to do. Help me, I pray. Amen. Power, all power. Surely is thine. Surely is thine. Right. Touch me and heal me. Savior divine. I hate, to, I hate to close the service. And I've got such a burden like I got this morning for somebody. I don't know who you are. 
Man, my heart's heavy for you this morning. My heart's heavy for you. Maybe your last change. Maybe my last change. Oh, don't talk like that, preacher. Well, you might as well, because it's the truth. Might as well just face up. They ought to offer every high school, every college ought to teach kids death 101. Teach them they're going to die. They might as well be getting ready. You know why they don't? They don't want to think about no afterlife. Too controversial. Too scary. Too religious. But it's something every one of them kids is going to have to face. God help us. Amen. All right. Now, look. These things are here. Get signed up on whatever sheet you want.